you, Lord. Worthy is the Lamb. So worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive honor, worship, and glory. We thank you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. We give you praise this day. We give you worship and adoration. Worthy are you, Lamb, Lamb that was slain to redeem us from sin, Lamb that was slain to redeem us unto God. Jesus, we worship you. We adore you, we glorify you. Blessed be the Lamb of God that was slain that we may be redeemed from sin, from darkness, from the hand of the enemy, to be brought out of darkness into your marvelous light. We thank you. Holy Lamb of God, we thank you. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to the Lamb of God. We bless your name. We magnify you. We adore you. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for giving your life that we may have life. Thank you for going to the cross. We may have a crown. Thank you for bearing our sicknesses, diseases, pain and our sorrow. Sins on your own body on the cross. We may be healed, may be made righteous, cleansed and sanctified, reconciled to God. Thank you. Thank you. You were slaughtered, precious lamb, sacrificed, that we may not be slaughtered. Thank you. So great redemption. Thank you for so great redemption. We are the redeemed of the Lord, and we declare so, we say so. We praise God Almighty. We thank you for redeeming us. We thank you for giving Jesus in our place. Oh, hallelujah, greater love has no man than this. Jesus will give his life. So we worship you, we adore you, we glorify you, and we thank you. We thank you for eternal salvation. We thank you. And so, Lord, on the merits of what Christ did for us on the cross, I stand to give you praise and thanks for every life, every soul, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl within the sound of my voice today. And in Jesus' name, I pray that all will walk in the vital aspects of redemption. Live as a redeemed of the Lord, free from sin and sickness, free from disease and sorrow and from oppression, free from poverty, free from confusion of mind, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray that no one will be sacrificed on any altar in the name of Jesus. I pray for deliverance out of the mouth of the lion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that any caged bird will be released 
to sing songs of praise today in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that anyone trapped will be delivered in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that all will be set loose as cows of the stall, kicking up their heels, leaping and jumping and praising God in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that no one will be swatted. I pray that no one will be slaughtered. I pray that no one will be smashed and crushed. Oh, in Jesus' name, sacrifice on any altar. Because Jesus has been sacrificed for us. I thank you for so great salvation. I thank you for so great deliverance from death. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you that even those in the very, in the grips of death, the jaws of hell are delivered today in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you that people escape the traps of the enemy. They escape the grip of the enemy. They escape being sacrificed and slaughtered. I thank you in the name of Jesus. I apply the speaking blood of Jesus Christ upon the house of God, upon the people of God. By the speaking blood of Jesus, people live. We live, we don't die, we live. We live to declare the praises of the living God. We live to fulfill divine purpose and divine destiny. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we live to praise God. We live to fulfill destiny. We live to fulfill purpose. I speak these things over the people of God and their houses in Jesus' name. I thank you the people escape. They escape. They escape. They escape the traps of the enemy in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you that none is weak. God's people are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you that people are strengthened by might in their innermost being, by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus. Today I pray for deliverance from sickness, deliverance from disease, deliverance from death, deliverance from unti untimely death in Jesus' name. I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I thank you that those who wait on you now begin to mount up with wings as a mighty eagle. I thank you in the name of Jesus. They're no longer weak. They're no longer weary. I thank you that they run and they don't faint. They walk and they don't grow weary. I thank you that they rise. They arise. They arise in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the rising up of the people of God in the name of Jesus. They soar with wings as a mighty eagle and they come into the place God has appointed for them. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I thank you. I thank you for your move in the house of God, in the lives of God's people. I thank you for delivering people. I thank you for drawing people to Christ. I thank you for breaking the gates of brass and the bars of iron. I thank you that your anointing destroys yokes. I thank you that your anointing removes burdens. I thank you that you set the captives free, the oppressed are loose, they are delivered. I thank you, mighty Holy Spirit. Oh God, thank you for revealing Christ to us. That people may see Christ and in seeing him may see God. And seeing God that the weak will be as David and those who are like David will be as a house of God. In the name of Jesus, I declare you healed. I declare you perfectly sound. I declare you whole, sanctified, glorified, 
justified by the blood of Jesus. I declare you sanctified, set apart for God's use on God's holy altar, not on any altar. You are not sacrificed on any altar in the name of Jesus. You are not swallowed up by any flood. You are not burnt by any fires, but you are set apart, purified by God Almighty in the name of Jesus. I snatch people out of the jaws of the enemy, of the lion in the name of Jesus. Makatali. Ilibipando zebeya, rendo zipaya, libikai tabeya. I break the power of the devil over people's minds and over their souls. I declare you loosed from depression. I bind lion spirits in Jesus' mighty name. You are qualified. I declare you qualified. You are qualified by the blood of Jesus to enjoy the inheritance of the saints in light. That which is yours shall come to you in the land of the living, in the name of Jesus Christ. God will be magnified and glorified in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mahandele, Librikendo, Zita, Brendos. Wherever you are in your home, lift your voice and begin to praise God for your deliverance. What I have seen, I've prayed for, and you are delivered in the name of Jesus. Your head is no longer in the mouth of the lion. You have come out. You have come out. You have come out in the name of the Lord. Jesus therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return oh singing with singing and with rejoicing with gladness in the name of Jesus Oh, Kabahande Lebrendo Zibrika tu Pratustefe, Piantoski Pratusta and De Ilostime. In the name of Jesus, get under the anointing, get under the anointing. In the name of Jesus, praise God where you must praise Him, thank Him where you must thank Him, pray in tongues, pray in the Spirit, pray in your own language. In the name of Jesus, praise God for so great deliverance. In the name of the Lord Jesus, what I have seen, I pray for today. You walk in the glory, you walk in the abundance. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you are released from every trap in Jesus' mighty name. By the faith of the living God, I declare it so. I declare it done. Jesus' matchless name. So it is, so it is, so it is. Mata Britos Crito Branto Brendosites. All arguments against you. I stop them by the speaking blood of Jesus that speaks better things. Whatever is speaking against you, I silence that mouth in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I shut that mouth in Jesus' name. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty and is upon the waters. Lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It is the anointing that destroys the yoke. Every yoke is destroyed by the anointing of the Spirit of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Just receive from God. Receive from God. Receive from God. In Jesus' name. The word of the Lord to you is that you are delivered. The word of the Lord to you is that you are healed. 
the word of the Lord to you is that Jesus was slaughtered so you will not be slaughtered in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus was made sick so you will not remain sick. You are healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. What I have seen, I have prayed for, and it is done in Jesus' name. You are not light, you are strong in the Lord. You are heavy. Heavy means you have glory. You have glory. You are not light as a mosquito to be swatted. No, in Jesus' name. You are not a prey in the mouth of any lion. You are delivered and you walk in the spirit of the lion of the tribe of Judah. In the name of Jesus Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah has roared. Who can disannul? Who can change what he has said? By two immutable, unchangeable things in which God cannot lie by his word and by his promise. God has declared that you are established and you are anchored in Christ. Your life is firmly grounded in Christ. You are unshakable and you are immovable. You have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. You cannot be shaken. The kingdom of God lives in you. The kingdom of God dwells in you. It is a kingdom of righteousness, peace and joy. Peace takes over your your mind, not sorrow, not confusion, not depression. I rebuke every spirit of heaviness. You who are heavy, you who are depressed, you who are confused, you are loose today in Jesus' name. You will not be consumed by the spirit of heaviness in the name of Jesus Christ. By the spirit of joy comes upon you in the name Jesus. I pray you out of that valley. Even in the valley of echo, he gives you hope. Even in the valley of trouble, he gives you hope. Even in the valley of trouble, the Lord gives you hope. And for your trouble, the Lord gives you double blessings. For your trouble, the Lord gives you double blessings. For what you went through, today you receive double blessing. Rise in the name of Jesus. Kaba andole bretos. Libi itaskri ifabundus haya. Zibie itasunta liri in the break kutuste. I give you thanks and I give you praise. What you have said is what will it come to pass. That is what will stand. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that you destroyed the devices of the enemy. Their hands cannot perform their craft. And the assignment of darkness shall not happen. I declare the darkness over. The darkness over. The darkness of Satan's power is past. It is over in Jesus' mighty name. And now the true light of Jesus shines so brightly in your life. Even now it shines with salvation. It shines with healing, with deliverance, with peace, power, prosperity, with God's grace and favor, his unfailing love in your life. In Jesus' matchless name and by the faith of the living God. I declare it done. Give God praise. Somebody in the house of the Lord and in your home, give him praise. Give him a shout. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. 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 To God be glory. For the great things he has done. In Jesus name. Give praise to the Lamb of God. Something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you Lord Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Let's look into the word of the Lord together. All around the world. And right here in Sanctuary. In Clinton, Maryland. God bless you. Welcome to World Missions Ministries. Praise God. And Pastor Anthony Turkson, it's my joy to share with you God's word at this time. Hallelujah. Praise God. Will the prayer, the first part of the service where we prayed, will remain part of this message? Amen. We're not going to edit it out. It's going to be part of this message. Praise the Lord. Whenever you get to the point where we're praying in tongues, just pray. 
that's a point you're not supposed to be listening for any interpretation. That's a time to pray. When we pray in tongues, we pray to God. Amen. And God understands. So God does not need to interpret. He doesn't need it interpreted. Amen. The only tongue that must be interpreted is a prophecy. But when we're praying, you're supposed to be praying. Amen. So don't be bothered that, well, I don't understand it when you speak in tongues. Well, when it's prayer, you're just supposed to pray also. Amen. When it's an opening prayer or closing prayer, only one person prays. And they pray in a language that we all understand. So that we can say amen at their giving of thanks. But when it is corporate prayer, we're all praying at the same time to God. We can pray in any language we want. Whether it's a known language or we pray by our spirit, God understands. We good? Praise God. What I said you can find in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Right? You can find that there about praying in tongues and praying, praying with your spirit and praying with understanding. Right? Just read it later on for those online who are not familiar with it. When you read 1 Corinthians 14, verses 13 and 14, you'll find it there. Now come with me to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. Praise the Lord. Abound in hope by the word of God. Abound in hope by the word of God. Praise the Lord. Abound in hope by the word of God. Romans 15. We'll look at two verses in Romans 15. Verse 4. And verse 13. Romans 15. Verse 4. And then after that we look at verse 13. Let's study the word of God together. Romans 4. Excuse me. Romans 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written before time were written for our learning. She's supposed to study the Bible to learn. Amen. What is written was written for our learning. You're not going to read the Bible in heaven because you're going to see God face to face. You're going to be with Jesus, the word himself, the living word. But what is written in the Bible, the written word of God, the Greek word is graphi, G-R-A-P-H-E. The graphy, what is graphically stated here, you have to read while you're here so you can learn for your own good. We're not going to read the Bible when we go to heaven because we'll be with the Logos, L-O-G-O-S, the living. Logos means living, the living word of God. We'll be with Jesus Christ. There's another type of word of God that we, get, we receive here on earth. And I'll talk a little bit more about that today. Uh, and that word is rhema, R-H-E-M-A, R-H-E-M-A, rhema. Rhema is a spoken word of God that brings a revelation to you. A spoken word of God that brings a revelation to you to accomplish a specific purpose. It is the spoken word of God that brings a revelation to a particular person, a specific person, to accomplish a specific purpose. You cannot use somebody's rhema for yourself. You can use the written word of God for yourself. You cannot use somebody's rhema for yourself. A rhema is addressed to a specific person to accomplish a specific purpose. You cannot apply somebody's rhema. A rhema is the spoken word of God from God to a specific person to accomplish a specific purpose. That person cannot use that same rhema to apply to something else. Just because God spoke to them, they cannot use that rhema to apply to something that God did not apply that rhema to. For example, the day Jesus told Peter, come. When Peter said, Jeez, Peter said to Jesus, Jesus, if it is you, ask me to come on the water. And Jesus said, come. And Peter stood on the word come and walked on water that day. That did not mean that another time Peter went fishing. Peter could just get out of the boat and step on the water. He would drown. That is presumption. Forgive me, it's a church, but I just want to make my point. Forgive me for saying this word. 
But that would be presumption and stupidity. It's a harsh word, but it's stupid to kill yourself. You know, by thinking that I'm doing something that God wants me to do to, I don't know, to glorify him or to prove his power or whatever. That would be stupid. For example, if you go and stand on the top of the Eiffel Tower and you jump and you say, uh, the Bible says you give his angels charge over me and you jump, you will die. You will, more than likely, you will die. And that would be a stupid death. It's, I, I, I know I'm not supposed to be, it's not the best way, but I just need to make my point. So don't do that. Amen? Right? The devil took Jesus on top of a high mountain, showed him the kingdoms of this world. In a moment of time, told him to jump off. And he, the devil quoted scripture. Even the devil believes in the scripture. And some people don't believe in the scripture. Even demons believe in the existence of God. And some humans don't believe in the existence of God. The fact that you believe in some, something like it exists doesn't mean that you rely on it. There are people who believe that Jesus actually lived, but they don't rely on him as their savior. There are some people who believe that Jesus came as a prophet, but they don't rely on him as the Lamb of God who saved their sins. You understand that? All right, so you want to believe and live by it. Amen? All right, so... The Bible says demons believe, but they tremble. We believe that God is. Demons also believe. And they do something. Some people believe and do nothing. Demons believe and do something. They tremble in fear. Book of James says demons believe that God is. And they tremble in fear. Amen? When you believe, you have to act. Praise the Lord. We believe to enter God's rest. He's with us. He's made all things well. Amen. Praise God. Sometimes God shows certain things and, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to talk about it because, you know, sometimes you have maybe somebody who is a, a baby Christian or new to some of these things and they get scared unnecessarily because if God is working, you should not be afraid. You're going to be all right. Amen. Uh, but I saw something that was very strange. It's not a normal thing. It's very strange. I, I give you a quick example. Even in the natural, it's not a normal thing that you see this. Has anybody ever been to a place like this? What I'm about to say. You ever been there or seen it on TV? A park. It's a park. Like a crocodile, a place where there's, there's a pond, there's the crocodiles in it. You know, and some the places where people go and ride on the crocodiles. Anybody ever seen that on TV? Into a place you ride? You ever seen that? Say amen, somebody. Or you have? Is there anybody here who's actually sat on a crocodile and done that? God bless you. Amen. Amen. Some people are very daring. They'll do that. Pray for our baby girl that she will never do that. It's a time she was in South Africa for, what did you go away for school? I said, go, go for college you go for one term somewhere else let's go you study abroad university of cape town or somewhere like that you think your daughter is studying and we see this picture there is a tiger next to her she has a little stick in her hand so i asked you know, so what about it? she said oh, the trainer said you know if she tries to do anything i wave the stick it will calm down my heart. I mean, real life big tiger, and your daughter is just sit, sitting next to the tiger, and I'm like, Lord Jesus, save us. So anyway, there are there are places like that. People go and they ride on on the back of a crocodile, alligators, crocodile. Now, I will tell you, actually, I'll never do that. But some people are like that. So, I saw, so I'm, now you, you can relate to what I'm about to tell you. I saw this on TV a long time ago. 
there's this park, and there's this, this guy that's tricks with crocodiles. I don't know whether it was an alligator. Anyway, he does these tricks, and you won't believe this. He puts his head, the crocodile opens his mouth, and he put his head in the mouth of this. Ever seen this? You seen it? Mrs. Safo, did you do it? Oh, man, God bless you. Would, would Bethel do it? I don't know. Why is it our girls do some strange things? Even the boys wouldn't do it. I wonder if Bethel would do it. I know Nana wouldn't do it. Andrew may do it. See all his karate kicks on. But anyway. So, this, this trainer does these tricks and he puts his head in the mouth of the, of the crocodile. Okay, I don't know which one. But, and, and he's fine. Fortunately, this one time, he, he went a little too long and he began to sweat. A drop of sweat fell from his brow into the mouth of the crocodile. And just instinct, just that, made the crocodile clump down his head. Thankfully. And you know when they show you things like that on TV, usually the person doesn't die. That's why they'll show it. So thankfully, he did not die. And they explained, because people talked about putting the, you know, killing that particular crocodile. Now, you, can, you can't trust to doing the tricks. And so some wanted it killed, put it down, and others were arguing against it. And so they watched the video to try to explain what, what went wrong. Some people are very interested in life. And the explanation was, of, that's why I noticed the drop of sweat. So the explanation was that the drop of sweat that went to fell to the mouth of the crocodile changed the vibe, just changed everything for the crocodile and just made it um, get anxious. So it just naturally went into the mood of protecting itself, attacking. So they ended up not killing it. Because they said the fault it was the fault of the trainer. Do you remember Sigma, Sigma Freud? Or, I don't know if I'm saying the names right, but they, they were in Las Vegas. They performed. They had tigers. One was mauled by the tiger. So everybody with me on this, you've seen these things before. All right. God showed me this. Can you imagine you're praying? God shows you somebody's head in the mouth of a lion. A human being. And this is not TV. This is not. This is, this is a revelation God's showing you. So anyway, I prayed and God brought deliverance. You know, over three days. But initially, uh, I was like, I'm not going to go and share this in church because somebody might go home and be afraid. That was my initial response. Reaction. So I'm praying, praying for three days, and eventually the breakthrough came. And the Spirit of the Lord told me, he says, when you go to church, you pray. Before you teach, you pray. Then you tell them. This time you tell them. Tell them this particular vision. I have delivered, but they need to know and understand that being in, we are engaged in spiritual warfare, and it is real. It is very real. You cannot open doors to the enemy and expect to get away with it. So the doors that we may have opened, the Lord is telling us, Shut those doors. Amen. It's like that trainer. Uh, and that trainer in this particular video actually talked about the fact that 
Uh, he went on too long and he was tired. He should have stopped, but he didn't stop. So he got tired and the body starts, he starts perspiring, sweating. Just one drop of sweat falls off his brow into the mouth of the he just shut his mouth, his head. That was, I mean, for me, watching that, it was, it was traumatic. I don't like watching things like that. It's, you just have to know who you are and how you are. I mean, when I see some things like that, I can go through a traumatic experience. Sometimes, even a year later, that thing can play back. I just, I can feel it in my body. So I try not to watch things like that. So I don't like it when people send me things on, you know how like social media people send you things on your phone. Sometimes it's like, it's scoring. Something happened somewhere in the world. Some Christian is saying it's God's judgment and they send you stuff. But God told me to tell you this. So he has delivered. I mean, I prayed for three days and the deliverance came even before that. But he still said, you go to church today and before you teach, you pray. Which is why I followed that. And as we were praying, I was even declaring, sort of explaining where, why we were praying. And I'm teaching it so that uh, you can learn to stand on the word of God yourself and act on God's word for yourself. That is, if you receive a revelation from God, a rhema from God, a prophecy from God, whether it's good or bad, you act on it, you get a breakthrough. If it's bad, you pray against it. If it's good, you pray that it will come to pass. Are you with me? God reveals to redeem. Sometimes the revelation is something that's bad that the devil wants to do. So you pray against it. Sometimes the revelation is that Joseph, I'll make you a prime minister. That's a good thing. Do you understand? Even if you got a, get a good revelation, you still have to pray it to come to pass because they're going to be the Potiphar's wives and the others who along the way, there's going to be rejection, there's going to be disappointment, there's going to be people that you help who's supposed to put, put in a word for you later who just forget about you going to be people who will be envious and jealous along the journey. So even if you get a good dream or a good revelation, you still have to pray that into fulfillment. We all good on that. Amen. Don't be fearful people. Go, oh my God, I saw this thing and God reveals to redeem. Amen. Jesus Christ was sacrificed so you will not be sacrificed. That is why I kept praying that. Amen. Sometimes some people open certain doors and because of uh, disobedience, rebellion, or ignorance, they lose. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Ignorance is not bliss. You need to know the truth of the word of God. Praise God. So don't be like, oh, pastor, don't say, don't tell me these things scare me. Well, you don't have a spirit of fear. You have a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. God's for you. God's on your side. And victory is always yours. Amen. But any door that you have opened that the Lord has been speaking to you about, Please, close that door. Amen? You don't want that drop of sweat off your brow falling to the mouth of the enemy. Amen. Are you with me? I just use that as, as an example related to the scriptures. The sweat of our brow has to do with walking in the flesh, has to do with walking in human strength instead of walking in, in the spirit, walking in God's rest. Amen. As long as Adam was in the rest of God, walking in obedience with God, he did not live to be blessed through his own effort, his own strength, 
through the sweat of his brow. No. After Adam and Eve sinned against God, then a curse, they, they go into sin and God imposes a curse on the earth and on the on human life. And God said, by the sweat of your brow, you're going to live. You're going to work to provide for yourself. You're going to live by self-effort in your own strength instead of relying on God. That was a curse. Christ, according to Galatians 3, 13 and 14, Christ has been made a curse for us so that the curse is removed and the blessing will come back. Amen? That's actually the gospel. In the gospel, there is a removal of curses and a bestowal of blessings. I'm just going to go and show it to you in Galatians and then we'll come back to Romans. So we'll go to Galatians 3 and we're going to look at 13 and 14 and then we'll come back. So go, go to Galatians 3. We'll look at the blessing. You look at the fact that the gospel is blessing. Galatians 3 13. If you find it, say amen. All right. For those online, it's on the screen. Galatians 3, 13, please. Christ has redeemed us. Does it say redeemed? Yes, redeemed. He didn't say he's going to redeem. He has done it. Amen. You don't need to pay anybody money to be redeemed. Christ has already done this. We good? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. The curse of breaking God's law. Transgressing or going against what God said don't do. Or even transgressing this. Not doing what God wants you to do. That's also a sin. If you omit to do the right that you know you should do, that's also a sin. And for most of us believers, we probably commit more of that sin than the sin of commission. Most believers don't commit the sin of commission. The sin of commission is actually going against something that God says don't do. Sometimes we do that. But, you know, not always, not all the time. You need to repent. But usually in life, like for most good people, kind, nice, good people, what, what, where they may go wrong is where they know to do something good and end up not doing it. You're human. You're not perfect. So you're going to end up not doing certain things that you should have done. Oh, I forgot. Oh, you know tend to do it and I slipped or have enough energy, time or money to do that, you know, whatever the case may be. All right, are we good? A sense of omission, sense of commission. God forgives us. Oh, anyway, Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. He was made it a curse for us. And he explains how. For it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. It is already written. So, here he's referring to the crucifixion. Christ was hung on a tree. He was crucified. And in the spirit realm, it meant something more than people just seeing a person being crucified. There was something else happening in the spirit realm. We're good. There's a spiritual transaction. Something was taking place unseen by the natural eye. Something was happening. Which the devil till today regrets. Amen. Not because he's a nice guy. He regrets it because in crucifying Christ, we were set free. 
So don't listen to people who tell you you are still bound. The devil who brings bondage himself knows you are free. And I told you already, the devil believes the Bible. He quotes the Bible. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down from the pinnacle of this, uh, from, of this temple. You know, the devil told Jesus that. Did Jesus listen? No. All right? So, don't go and throw yourself off anything and say God will give his angels charge over me. No. That is presumption. That is foolishness. I'm not trying to insult you, but that just would be wrong. There was a revival in a city many, many years ago. I think this was in the 70s or 80s, I think. And three young girls in that area uh, was flooding, trying to go home after service. Tragically, unfortunately. They said Peter walked on water, so they were going to walk on the water to go home, and they drowned. It became a backlash against the church, against the young revival, the young move of God in the area. That, you know, all these evangelism preachers are teaching people wrong things, and young people are getting killed. It was, it was just really sad, tragic, just folly. So, don't do that. That was, I think, the early 80s. Last year, there's a pastor who drowned country Africa, somewhere in Africa, because he brought his congregation there to prove to them that he had faith or whatever and was going to walk on water. I don't know what is it is about this walking on water thing. People have done some stupid things. They've gone to heaven before their time. Don't do that. Amen? Okay. Galatians 3. Let's finish 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. We are redeemed, people, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangs on a tree. He was crucified for us. Christ was sacrificed. You will not be sacrificed. I saw somebody's head in the mouth of a lion. And God took the person's head out of the mouth of the lion. Ladies and gentlemen, I saw it. You know, some things shock you. I'm like, whoo, wait a minute. What is that? And God took the person's head out of the mouth of the lion. I'm here to tell you today, no, you, nothing is too far gone. You are not in a place where you, are, you cannot be redeemed. You are not in a place where you cannot be delivered. You have not gone too far. God will save. God will heal. God will deliver. God will help you. Amen. Don't believe people who tell you because of something that somebody in your family did in 1855, you know, that you are in a cave, you are on some altar, and your life is in the ocean. And there are, ladies and gentlemen, Christ was made a curse for us. Don't accept the curse that they are putting on you. Amen. Don't do it. Please don't do it. I had a fight with somebody. I don't give details. But it's very recent. Argument in a counseling session. Unbelievable. Come to me for help and you argue and you're fighting me. Because some prophet, false prophet, told them that something that was happening was the cross. And I'm trying to explain to them from the scriptures 
what carrying your cross means. And they're arguing with me. So finally I said, so do you want to bear this trouble? No, that's why I came to you. I said, well, but you're not listening to me. I prayed for you today. Christ went to the cross so you wear a crown. Amen. Believe the Lord your God and you will be established. Believe the truth of the word or even a prophetic word, believe it so you'll prosper. You don't believe a prophetic word to remain in bondage. Scripture says, believe the Lord your God, you'll be established and believe his prophets so you prosper. If you are believing the prophet to remain in bondage, that prophet is not speaking for God. That interpretation that you have is not from God. Even if there is no human prophet involved, but you, you apparently got some kind of revelation from God and something that makes you fearful and you makes you think that you're bound and you're going to lose this, you're going to be sacrificed. I've come to tell you according to scripture and by current revelation, fresh revelation from God, I have seen that God has taken your head out of the mouth of the lion. It wasn't that you were, the lion was beside you, like in Shrug goes to South Africa and she's standing. Can you imagine your daughter is next to a whole big tiger? In this revelation, you're not next to it. The, the head of the person was in the mouth of the lion and God took it out. This is our God. He will save, he will heal, he will deliver, he will help you. It doesn't matter how long the problem has gone on in your life. God will help you. He says, I am God. The lion of the tribe of Judah has roared. Amos 3, the lion has roared. Who can prophesy otherwise or disannul what God has declared? The word of the Lord is established in heaven. Established forever, O oh Lord, thy word is established in heaven. All God needs is somebody to believe that word and to pray that I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then herein lies a problem. God can't find people who would dare to believe him. That is the problem. He says, I'm looking out all over the world to find somebody standing in the gap who is interceding, who is taking hold of God, and you can't find anybody. Because we are busy holding on to everything else but God. Holding on to what the Democrats said, to the Republicans said, to what this person said. It's the kingdom of men. We have been called to follow the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not to live by the edict of men. But to live by, on the, by the incorruptible word of God that lives and abides forever. This word, if you believe it, ladies and gentlemen, you will stand. You will be anchored. You will not be moved by the storms of life. Nothing can move you or shake you. We have a kingdom that is unshakable. We receiving a kingdom that is unshakable may serve God acceptably with godly fear and reverence. Fear God, not man. Hallelujah. Galatians 3.14. So we see Jesus died so that verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the heathen. On the Gentiles. Through whom? Pastor Turkson? No. The Archbishop of Canterbury? No. As great as all of them may be, God bless them. Through Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, that we might receive, receive the promise of the Spirit through your works? No. Through human effort? No. Through the sweat of your brow? No. Through faith, believing God's word. Simple. What God has said. God has said it. That settles it for me. Amen.
Then I also said the gospel is blessing. We notice that in verse 14. Everybody sees this? That the blessing of Abraham might come on us. Everybody sees that? All right. To further support it with, with another scripture, right there in Galatians 3, look at verses 8 and 9. Galatians 3, verses 8 and 9. The gospel is blessing. It, Galatians 3, 8 and 9. And the scripture foreseen, seen ahead of time, that God would justify. What does justify mean? Declare righteous. God declares you righteous. Oh, who can condemn you? That God will justify the heathen through faith. Justify through faith, not justify through sowing a seed. Sow the seed all right for something else, but not for justification. Sow to reap. So to bless, so to encourage, so to somebody's life because you receive spiritual meat from them. So sow your natural things into their life. For those who preach the gospel must live by the gospel. So for those reasons. But not because if you don't sow, God will not bless you. When we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You were chosen in Christ before the world began. That is the love of God. This is why I personally have a problem with the emphasis on, on this grace is undeserved favor. Ladies and gentlemen, we were chosen before the world began. Can you just get that? He says, I love you. The emphasis is on the kindness of God, the love of God. Not the undeserving aspect of a person. One day the church will get this. You know, we go through cycles, like movements. You know, we got a healing revival, you know, in the 1940s. And then in the 70s, the faith movement, 70s, 80s. So we go through that. Now we are in the grace movement. We're going to get to the love movement. When we get there, five people will be like, okay, got it. Now I got it. God loves me. And the focus is God. On God. Who he is. His love is unconditional. I'm telling you. People, we'll get there. People will get it. Sometimes you teach something like this. And people have a hard time receiving it. Because they're like, well, why? But this man of God doesn't teach what you're teaching, Pastor Turkson. These people internationally known, these great people, these great, you know, instead of looking at God's word, basic scripture, everybody knows if you've been to a Christian wedding or wedding where it's like Christian people, 1 Corinthians 13, the love scripture. Love takes and keeps no record what is wrong. So it is impossible according to scripture, to talk about God's love and to talk about somebody undeserving. He, he does not take account of your sin. If you took account of your sin, where would we be? Love covers a multitude of sins. Love takes even human beings, a mother. Mothers are amazing. A mother, the son has done wrong. Everybody knows it. It's glaring. We have the evidence. Mom says, that's not my child. That is, that is not my child. Even, even human beings can love that way. How much more God? One day we, we are going to get it. The kindness of God. The love of God. When you know that God loves you, you know you're not going to fail because you have the support of Almighty God. Amen. 
Love upholds faith and faith upholds hope. Faith operates because of love. Faith worketh by love and faith hope upholds your hope. Gives you the assurance that what you saw, forgive me for saying it, but what you saw in your mind's eye, what you envisioned, what you imagined, what you hoped for, what you have not seen, faith gives you the assurance. It is only a matter of time. It will manifest. The dream will manifest. What you've imagined, that is your hope. What you saw in your mind's eye that nobody has seen, but you have seen, and it excites you. You wake up and you're like, Ooh, I'm, I'm just, oh, hallelujah. It's going to be, it's going to be. You tell people and they can't even see it, but you have, they can't see it because it's not for them. God revealed it to you. It thrills you. You're excited to be alive. And you know it will manifest. That knowing, knowing in your knower, inside you that it will manifest, that's faith. Supporting that dream, that picture, that imagination. Amen. And it will happen. You think about it. There is nothing that has happened on this planet. And that's happening that somebody did not first dream of. Imagine. Picture. See it. Again, I'll use in your mind's eye. Somebody saw it. I remember a speech where Kennedy talked about America going to space and conquering space. This is the time you don't ask what your country would do for you. What you would do for your country. Some speeches that just inspires people. And then like Pastor Joe, they go into their lab and they, they use their scientific mind to try to make something that has been dreamed happen. Today, billionaires are using space as their playground. Today, <laughs> it's like Uber. <laughs> you can Uber to space. Somebody just dreamt it. That dream, that is your hope. That picture. That imagination is God's dream that he put in your spirit. Amen. And your spirit painted it upon the canvas of your mind. And it's captured you. You're like, this is going to be. This is going to be. Hallelujah. I used this example before. If you've had a, what they call a white wedding, you know, probably... Before that day that you went at the wedding, at whatever age, you had a picture of how your, what's the thing, the robe, the gown, the thing, the white gown that the, the bride wears. Gown, yeah? Okay, so you had a picture. Some of you even drew it. You drew it. At whatever age, 7, 13, 15, 18, whatever age, 20, before it happened. When you went around with your mother or your girlfriends to the shops to pick, you knew exactly what it was you wanted because you saw it way before anybody saw it. Am I, am I telling the truth? Yes. And then you lived it one day before the priest or the pastor. He said, I do. I do. Your imagination. That was your hope. Supported by faith, which was supported by the fact that God loves you. Some of you get seen that same example, that wedding, or that picture you knew was going to happen because you had a father who could bankroll it, who loved you, 
your daddy's girl. Your dad had the resources. So you were relaxed. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? <laughs> your heavenly father owns it all. And your heavenly father loves you. So whatever picture you have, you should be assured that it's going to happen. When others are anxious, you are relaxed. You get this? Through faith. All right. Please come back to Romans 15. Romans 15. What was the first verse we looked at? <laughs> verse 4. For whatsoever things were written before were written for our learning, that we, we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Okay. Let's, let's stay there for a little bit. Whatever is written. Now, is that the Bible? Everybody, is that the Bible? Okay. So, through what is written in the Bible, God says here in verse 4, he wants you to learn. Right? Let's, let's glean. Let's pick out the things he wants, us, he wants to happen from, from the Bible, what's written. In verse 4. Whatsoever things were written before time were written for what? For what? Number one, for learning. That we may learn. Okay. Number two, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures. So the word of God, you're supposed to learn something from the word of God. The word of God will teach you about patience. Right? The word of God will comfort you or console you. And finally, the word of God will do what? That through the scriptures we may have what? Hope. So the last part of verse 4 is telling us that one of the main reasons for which God recorded the scriptures, a lot of examples in the Bible, is so that you have what? Hope. We good? We have hope. All right, so I'm not done with Romans 15. We'll come back to it. So let's go to one of the examples written before time. Okay, let's do verse 4 again. Whatsoever things were written, things, plural, were written. So a number of things have been written. We're all good? In the Bible. And they're written so we will learn. They're written so that we may have patience when we're going through trial. So that we may be comforted and we may have what? Hope through the scriptures. Things, plural, that are written. Let's go to one of the things written. And I'm going to attach it to the revelation I got. So that it's fresh bread, big from heaven. We good? Okay. So let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 35. 1 Samuel seventeen. And verse 35. Hallelujah. First Samuel 17, 35. Uh, all right, excuse me. Let me read from, I'll read from 34. 34. And David said unto Saul, Your servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. We all good? Okay. 35. And I went out after him and smote him or killed it and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote it and slew him. Amen. So, this is what we're going to do. David here, 
David's name, David, means beloved. So David here represents Jesus Christ. God called Jesus my beloved son. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. We all good? So the David of God represents who? Jesus. Are you, are you with me? Okay. So this story here, this David, is Jesus. It's a picture of Jesus. This is God talking about Jesus. This is hidden in the scriptures in the Old Testament about Jesus. It's not about a human being. It's about, it's about Jesus Christ. Showing us how we are God's sheep. We are the sheep of his pasture. Amen. Psalm 100. We are the sheep of his pasture. Praise the Lord. And the lion here is the devil. What's 1 Peter 5, 8? 1 Peter 5? Let me read this. I'll come right back. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because, why should I be sober? Why should I be vigilant? Tells you why. Because your adversary, you have an adversary, New Testament. You have an enemy, that devil. As a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. We, we all there? Okay. So Satan is looking to devour Somebody say, minus me. Amen. Verse 9, whom resist? Oppose him. Steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So some of you are going through sudden afflictions. I don't know what. But the devil was trying to eat you up. Devour you. Break your bones, chew you up, and finish you off. Some of you are, are being sifted like wheat. You are tired and you want to give up. Maybe you are online. God showed me that the devil cannot eat you up, he cannot devour you. He can, God will not allow it. He will not. And from the revelation, he did not. I saw God deliver you. Amen. Now, you don't have to go with the vision that I got. But I saw it and I prayed and I saw the release. But you don't have to go with that. Just go with the word. Because the Bible, the word of God, is a more sure word of prophecy than my prophecy or my vision. We good? You with me? Okay. So come back now. To 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17. And what was the verse? 34. Thank you. David said to Saul, Your servant kept his father's sheep. Jesus is God's servant. In Isaiah 52 and 53. Isaiah 52 and 53, God called Jesus his servant. He said, my servant. My servant Jesus. He will bring deliverance to the captives. Salvation to the lost. Healing to the sick. My servant, God's servant, Jesus. We good? Let's go. <laughs> Isaiah. Oh, God loves you. He gave you a teacher. Amen. Let's go to Isaiah 52 first. Hallelujah. Isaiah 52 and verse 13. I'll give you a second together. Isaiah 52, 13. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When you find it, please say amen. Okay, good. Let's go then. Isaiah 52, 13. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. 
he shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. In your notes or in your Bible, you can write this down. Write down Philippians 2, 9 to 11. I'm not going to turn to that. But you can write down, this is Philippians 2, 9 through 11. What is? The part where it says, his servant shall be what? Exalted and extolled and be very high. That is Philippians 2, 9 to 11. Which says that God had highly exalted Jesus and given him a name which is above every name. That are the mention of the name. Invoke the name. Call on the name. Jesus. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That thing which is speaking against you is not Lord. It doesn't have the final say. It's not Lord. God showed me that he took you out of the mouth of the, the mouth of the lion. I mean, that is just beautiful to me. It wasn't that you were next to the lion or the lion was running after. No, the head wasn't. God says, there's nothing is too hard for me. It is not over for you. Even with the head in the mouth of the lion, God brought deliverance. And you've seen, a, you've seen it in the Bible. So it's not, forget the vision I saw. But for me, the vision is just it's like current. God is saying, this is what these people are going through. Pray about this now. You understand? So you deal with it now. He didn't give me this message 10 weeks ago. It's now because something in particular was happening now. Or then, and God took care of it. Praise the Lord. We good? Okay. Isaiah 50. What were we? Tell me again where we were. 52, I read 13, right? Okay, let's, let's make sure it's Jesus. Verse 14. And many were astonished at you. His face was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. Nobody has suffered like him. Yeah, we've gone through trials, but none of us has resisted against sin shedding our blood to save humanity. None of us has done that. <laughs> no, to save humanity from sin, nobody has done that. Verse 15, so we are sure that the servant is only Jesus. No other, the other servants that God had. And, but when you read on, you know that is Jesus talking about. Look at 15, so shall he sprinkle many nations. Well, God used Elijah, God used Elisha, God used Moses, but they didn't sprinkle us with, with their blood to save us. Yes? So this is not the other servants of God. This is Jesus. Read on. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The king shall shut their mouths at him. For that which has not been told them shall they see, and that which they, which they had not heard shall they consider. Then you just roll on, roll on to chapter 53. Just keep going. Like there's, there's no break. Who shall believe our report? Who's going to believe this thing that Isaiah is saying and others, other prophets have said? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Verse 2, for he, this is a person, as a male, shall grow up before the Lord God as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. The dry ground is Israel. He has no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Three, he is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Look at verse four. Surely, same person, surely he has borne our what? Griefs. In the Hebrew, griefs here is actually sicknesses. And carried our sorrows. In the Greek, sorrows here is pain. Pain from the Hebrew word make of. M-A-K-O-V. But the B is a V sound. So M-A-K-O-V. All right, go on. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. 
He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Isn't he talking about Jesus? Yes. So that servant of the Lord is Jesus. All we like sheep, verse 6, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. This is Jesus, servant of God. All right, so back to 1 Samuel chapter, give me the chapter. 1 Samuel, where were we? 17, I know it. I just want to make sure you are awake. <laughs> Amen. 1 Samuel 17. Verse 35. David is speaking. I'm sorry, go back to 34. And David said unto Saul, Your servant kept his father's sheep. David is the beloved. That's Christ. Christ was keeping the father's sheep. We are the father, we are the sheep, the father's sheep. The father is God. We're good? Okay. And then came a lion. That is the devil. Okay, verse 35. So he took one of the lamb, yeah, 35. I went after him and smote him. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And delivered it out of his mouth. We have been taken out of the mouth of the lion. Amen. I like that when Pastor Sandra says, glory to God. It's beautiful. Praise God. Very quickly, I'll give you two more examples. Because it says, what is written, things written, plural, things written in the scriptures, that we may have hope. I'll give you a New Testament example, but on our way to the New Testament, I'll ask you a question. We're going to 2 Timothy 4. That's a New Testament example. But on our way there, somebody tell me another example in the Old Testament, somebody who was delivered from the mouth of lions. Daniel, you have another example. Another time, God wrote that. He shut the mouths of lions. In fact, in Daniel's case, it was not one lion, lions. He was in the den of hungry lions. And in Daniel 6, is it 6? 6, 22. Just, just give me a moment, please. Uh, somebody check this out for me. Daniel 6, 22, I think. Daniel 6, 22. My God has sent his angel and shut the, the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. Hallelujah. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me. And also before you, O king, have I done no hurt. Hallelujah. Before the devil tells you, oh, you're not innocent. <laughs> And lie to you and put you in bondage and in fear so you can't resist him. What Daniel is talking about here, the innocence here is righteousness. That righteousness is what God has made you in Christ. Amen. Okay. Are we good? We are made the righteousness of God in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, verse what? This is World Missions Ministries. Come on, people. Verse 21. Okay. I'm just going to assume that we have new people. So I'm going to turn to it. I'm going to read it. 
What did I say? Second Corinthians five. What? Five. Twenty-one. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It is not we might do the righteousness. We might be made. You have to have a consciousness of righteousness. I am made the righteousness of God. One of the things that has really blessed me about America, American culture, this aspect, again, don't, don't say, well, but American culture, I'm not talking about everything about American culture, but this one thing is, is the spirit of confidence, the spirit of boldness. Knowing who you are and knowing that you're the best You may not be, but just the sense of, I'm the best. I mean, that audacity, I like that spirit about America. You play a National Basketball Association. You win, you are called a world champion. You play baseball. They play baseball in Japan. But we play baseball in America. We call it World Series. I don't care. I love that. I like somebody who says, God, I don't care what's going on in the world and what anybody says about me. Against you alone have I sinned. That is David. David messed up. And messing up is not a good thing. But David understood that he lived by the righteousness of God. He lived on the mercy of God. He lived on God's goodness. And you have to know that. He says, against you alone have I sinned. Please, don't give me to the hands of my enemies, Lord. I just throw myself on the mercy of, in the natural, we have this. As Reverend Janice would tell you in her profession. I throw myself at the mercy of the court. If we do that in the natural, why don't you do it in the spiritual? Throw yourself at the mercy of the court of heaven. And in the court of heaven, the blood of Jesus Christ has washed away our sin. By him, therefore, let us offer to God the sacrifice of praise. He has gone and made a way for us. He, by his blood, his sacrifice, has given us a new and a living way. Walk in that. Not the old way. Not the old way. Amen. I'm done with a series on hope. And we're going to be learning a lot of things as we go on about God's kindness, God's love. We need to understand God. I'm not making excuses for sin. I don't need to. I need to, you know, pass here and make people sin. People will sin anyway. But ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand God. Until the law was given in the Bible, God, when people sinned, God was not chasing them to kill them. People only began to drop dead or were stoned to death when a law was given. Sin was only recognized by God as sin when God made the law. We'll get to it, and I'm going to teach you from the Bible. And you will change. You will change. It will change you. Righteousness makes you bold like the lion. That's Proverbs 28. The wicked flee when nobody's chasing, but the righteous is bold like the lion. The righteousness that comes by the blood of Jesus. Oh, you'll see it. And you, you begin to change your thinking. I'll give you a quick example to challenge you before we get to it. Amen? Before we get to it. Praise God. Hey, I'll give you that example just to make you think. As Mel was talking to me today about cliffhangers that Pastor Kofi and Mr. Chen like to use when they teach. I'll give you this. Tell me this. 
How come Cain killed his brother Abel? Cain was wrong. Cain was wrong. But you look, read in the Bible and you see this. Cain was wrong. But look at the break God gave him. Cain was wrong. As evil. I mean, for, forgive me for saying, as unforgivable as it is to take your own brother's life. Yet he dares stand before God. And he says to God, somebody's going to see me and kill me because I killed my brother. You just killed your brother and you don't want to get killed. And you know what God said? Cain, I put a mark on you. So nobody will kill you. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute, God. How is that? If I'm, if I'm Abel now, my, I'm furious. In fact, I can see why Abel's blood was crying from the ground. I, I, if I'm, I don't know about you. I mean, you are very Christian people. God bless you. But if I'm Abel, I am furious at this point. I, I refuse to be dead. Anyway, I'll get up and say, God, no, no. This, I, I know. Yeah. I, I'll refuse to die. I'm like, God, this is, how is, that, how is that even fair? God, he just killed me. I, nah, I, for, for the first time, I actually just saw why the Bible says Abel's blood is crying. Because <laughs> listen, it's not fair. But you come into that revelation where people lived in the Old Testament. People, people don't see God's grace and God's love in the Old Testament. No, 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 he was there. Sin is a transgression of the. You ought to read Bible. Come on, people. Professor Yolande, you have to start your. What's that? Bible reading again. I know with the COVID and everything. Start it. Let's get online once a week or once a month. Once a month. Please get to know this book. Know the Bible for yourself. Sin. It's only sin because somebody broke the law. Before the law, there's no sin. It's like you're driving on the highway. I can go as fast as I, I want to go until you put a sign that says 60 miles per hour and I go over. You cannot hold me against it. The only thing I'll be breaking is the law of my conscience. So before the law, God judged people by their conscience. And unfortunately, with a conscience, if it's already defiled, <laughs> it doesn't care. And you can't really use anything against me because you never gave me a law. I haven't broken anything. What's the law that I broke? Are you with me? And this is not a license to sin. I'm just teaching you about the love, the kindness of God. Be a bold person. Jesus Christ washed our sins away, past, present, and future. Gone. So that you may walk in the righteousness of God. Do you get it? When you know your clothes are the best purified, you keep them. But if you don't understand the value of what you have, that's when you misuse it. Come on, you get it? You have glory. God's glory. Live like that. Royalty don't beg. Royalty. Royals don't beg. You see how they strut around? And then the rest of us waste our time talking about them, taking pictures of them. <laughs> when you are actually God's royalty. Come take pictures of me. Hallelujah. You learned something today? All right. Second Timothy chapter 4, I think I gave you, right? Did I say chapter 4? All right, verse number 17. 2 Timothy 4, 17. We'll do 17 and 18. Amen. I hope you've been blessed today. 2 Timothy, what did I just say, Pastor Sandra? 4, thank you. Verse 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. Oh, forgive me, forgive me. Let me just, I won't take, I won't, sometimes you can just keep going on and on. I won't do that. But just, just get a picture of the context. Go to just verse 16, just a verse before that. 
At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. <laughs> I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Okay, so verse 16, just stay there for a moment. I know this man is an apostle. He's a very spiritual person. He's like Stephen. Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He's a good, he has a good heart. All right. But that aside, let me ask you a question. What kind of state is he in emotionally? Considering that he's been rejected, betrayed, he's been left alone. Come on, look at it. Verse 16. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. Have you ever been rejected? I mean, don't, don't answer, but just, you know. Have, have you ever been rejected? Somebody rejected for a job, you know. Uh, like, you trained all these people. They didn't know anything how to do this job. And when it came time for promotion, they got the job. Oh, it happened before? You know this? Oh, that hurts. That must have hurt. For whatever reason, they gave it to them. Because they are their friend, because they're their golf mate, or whatever. This world. Oh. And you're going through this affliction. And you're like, man, when will it end? So you didn't get a job, you didn't get a promotion, you didn't get the money to come along with it. And then suddenly, your basement flooded. Then, uh, what's that thing that makes the heating come on in the house that's in the basement? That also got busted. The burner, the furnace. Oh. And then AC. And especially when you have a two-system AC, two-level AC. And you have to change both. <laughs> yeah. That's when you need a wife like Pastor Beck who says, no, I'm not changing both. You change just this, this one is busted. You change this one. Leave that one, the other one alone. Because you know how some of these technicians are, they come, well, this one is gone. It just means the other one is going to go too. So just change both. $12,000 now, you know. Oh, some of them are really good, you know, smooth talkers, man. So you're like, no, just change this one, leave the other one alone. I'll plead the blood of Jesus on it. Life, man, can throw you some curveball. God, man, my head is in the mouth of this devouring spirit, and it's about to eat me alive. Please, I need a breakthrough. I saw God take your head out of the mouth of the devouring spirit. In Jesus' name, you are free. Yes. For somebody, it's their, it's, it's their finance. For somebody, it's their marriage. For somebody, it's your child. The devil is trying to take your child out. What are you going to do? I've come to tell you he was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement needful for you to have peace of mind in your storm was upon Jesus. He wore a crown of thorns so you may wear a crown of glory. He was beating on his back. He was wounded and by his stripes we are healed. Come on, give the Lord a shout. Woo, you are healed. Stand on that word. It is written so you may have hope. Be comforted. Job's story is written so that we may be comforted and may have patience that the Lord would deliver us. And for your trouble, as I prayed, he will give you double. Amen. So you've been forsaken. <laughs> Paul, he said, no man stood with me. You're all alone. 
Can you imagine the entire office? Everybody is against you. And they know in their heart, you are right. And they will not stand for you. Man. Life. Yeah. yeah, this is where he was. And look at his heart. He says, I pray God, don't lay this to their charge. Just God, heal my heart. I don't want to be bitter. Heal my heart. Pray for those who persecute you. You do that, you heap coals of fire on their head. Let God work. Look at Paul. Then watch Paul, verse 17. He says, notwithstanding, despite all this that was against me, who stood with me? The Lord. Come on, people. The Lord stood with me. He is standing beside you. Fear not. There will be no loss of anybody's life. In the name of Jesus. For there stood by me this night. Last night the angel of the Lord. Whose I am. And whom I serve. Who said to me Paul. There will be no loss of your life. Or the loss of the lives of the 276 souls. With you on this ship. Ladies and gentlemen we are on a journey. As I pray today to fulfill divine destiny. You will fulfill it. You and your house. You and your children. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Our ship is not going down. No, no, no. We will arrive at our destination. There will be no shipwreck of our faith. You know in the scriptures how that happens? There's only shipwreck of your faith when you don't add faith to a what? Does anybody know it? To a good conscience. Scripture. This is Bible now. Yeah. You have to have this. Not only awareness, understanding. But this presence of mind. The spirit of your mind about God is this. He's a good God. God, you are good. I judge you faithful. That is how Sarah got her miracle. Some things don't come by faith alone, but by faith and patience. As you are going through, what do you think in your heart and your mind about God? God, are you for me? God, what's going on? No, no, no. Stop asking those questions. Be like Sarah. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 11, I think, through faith and no, no, excuse me. Hebrews 11. Sarah judged, 11, 11. Sarah judged God faithful. And so she conceived and bore a son. When you read it, her breakthrough came because of the kind of mind she had about God. Come on, people. You have to see this. Forgive me. I have to show it to you. Hebrews 11. I think it's verse 11. I know some things... Uh, yeah, I know. We got to get it right. Hebrews 11. Did I say verse 11? Okay, let me make sure I got it right. Hebrews 11. Yes, 11, 11. Look at this. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. Why? Why? Come on, people. Why? Because when you see the word because, you know what? There's been a why. Yes? Why? Because, because what? She judged him faithful who had promised. That was a secret. Sarah conceived because as for Sarah, she was going around in her neighborhood. She says, God, you're faithful. God, you're faithful. I don't care what's going on, but God, you are faithful. Everybody forsook me, but God will not forsake me. God, you are faithful. My head may be in the fire, but God is faithful. Faithful is he who has called me, who will also do it. Faithful is he who has begun a good work in me, who will finish it. God, you are faithful. That is how Sarah got a breakthrough. It says it. I'm not making it up. You saw it yourself. It says because Sarah judged God faithful. And God was excited. God was like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, baby, you trust me, right? Ooh, let me do it for you. Yeah. Ask someone for a favor, 
for help. Even when that person cannot do it for you. But you make that person know you trust them. And you know they are willing to help you. I'm telling you, this person would move heaven and earth to try to help you. But when you make a person think, oh, you don't care. And I don't think you're really going to. Well, what is your motivation? You already wrote me off. So why care? Why bother? Do you get it? Did I help you today? All right, so what was the scripture I was looking at? 2 Timothy 4, 17 and 18. 17, right? I think. Yes. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was, read the last part, everybody. I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. That is the vision God showed me. Give the Lord a shout, somebody. God in the New Testament, not only the Old, but the New Testament, delivered Paul out of the mouth of the lion so that Paul may continue his purpose in life, that by me the preaching might be fully known. So by you, whatever God called you to do, may you also be delivered from whatever lion tried to, to, to eat you or devour you so you can finish your destiny. That's what I prayed for, by the Spirit for you. It is done. I know it is done. But I need for you to go home standing on the word of God. A sure word of prophecy. Not my vision, of prophecy, but the word, the Bible. Please, have I helped you? Have you seen this for yourself? So that you might have hope through the word. You might abound in hope, increase in hope through the word. Amen. Then he says in verse 18, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. And preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. To whom be glory forever and ever. Before you go away from there, talking about finishing his course, does everybody see in the context he's talking about going to preach, do what God told him to do? Everybody sees that? We're good? Are you with me? Okay, so in that same spirit, listen to Paul. Same chapter. Go to verse 7 and verse 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. So he's done, he's fulfilled his purpose, his destiny, yes? Okay. Eight. Henceforth there's reserved, laid up for me, a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Amen? I want you to see the second part of that verse. And not to me only. Come on, read it, please. And not to me only but unto all them also that love his appearing. So what's that telling us? Paul says, God was with me. He delivered me from the mouth of the lion so that I'll finish my purpose. And in context, we have seen that Paul is saying, God will complete the work in his life, deliver him, complete the work in his life, give him his crown, but not to Paul only. So evidently he's writing this not for himself. He's writing this for us. Come on, people, are you seeing this? It's like if I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I know for a fact God's going to bless you. Okay? It's fine it is good. It's, it's biblical. It's in the Bible. When you say, Pastor, God bless you too. It's biblical. It's good. Are you with me? Okay. But I don't need you to tell me that God will bless me too. When I'm telling you that I know for a fact God has blessed you, it's because I know I'm also what? Blessed. Already blessed. I'm being blessed and shall ever be blessed. Do you get that? Paul didn't need to write this to assure himself. He was already self-assured. He was writing this for us. What we just read, it's because of us. So we're going to go and conclude in our opening scripture. 
which was what? Romans 15. Oh, I'm glad you paid attention. So let's go and conclude. What was written about Paul was not written for Paul, but for who? For us. Romans 15, verse 4, For whatsoever things were written before were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Amen. 13, Romans 15, 13. Now, I conclude now, at this juncture, at this point, finally, amen. Now, the God of hope, Fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Believing his word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the rhema, the word of God, the rhema of God. Believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is my prayer for you. In conclusion, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, believing the word that he told you so you may abound in hope, in believing the revelation he gave to you, in believing the wisdom, the word of wisdom he gave you. So that by acting on that word of wisdom, you may have hope. The word of God gives you hope. The revelation of God gives you hope. The wisdom of God gives you hope. When you build your life by the revelation, by the word, the word of wisdom, the wisdom of God, the insight of God, you are hopeful that it will happen and it will be good for you. For he knows the plans he has for me. They are plans of welfare to give me a future and an expected end. I know it shall be as God said to me. Why? Because he loves me. He loves me with perfect love. In spite of myself, but because of his nature, for God so loved the world he gave. If you are listening to me around the world, God loves you, so he gave Christ to save you. Jesus already died for your sins. Jesus was raised up to make you righteous. To make you righteous. You don't have to do anything to become righteous. Jesus died and rose again to make you righteous. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior and as my Lord. If you do that today, you'll be born again. You'll be made the righteousness of God in Christ. And you know something? As I taught today, God will take you out of the mouth of the lion. Whatever has been eating you up, trying to swallow your life. I don't know what it may be. Maybe sorrow. You have to live. You have to live. Maybe you lost a mother and this thing is destroying you. Oh, it's real. I know. I know. But your mother does not want you to be destroyed, to die. Your mother gave birth to you that you may live. They've gone on. But you have to live and fulfill your purpose. And so, may you be free and delivered from sorrow that is ready to devour you. I saw it in the vision. I prayed for it three days. And God showed me the release. But aside of the vision we have seen in the Bible, God set Daniel free. And to show us the power of the miracle, the same people who threw him in there, when they, were, they lied about him, when they were thrown in there, the Bible says, before they hit the ground, 
<laughs> the lions ate them, not only flesh, bones and all. Look at that. Before, they didn't even hit the ground of the dead. The lions ate, ladies and gentlemen, it was real. I know you're going through stuff, but the Lord showed me he has delivered you. Give him praise, somebody. Amen. The beloved of God, Jesus, the David of God came and took you out of the mouth of the lion. That demon that sits in your master bedroom and keeps the person who has been assigned to marry you from coming into your life. Today, that demon can no longer swallow your life, your social life, your marital life. Not anymore. I saw it. I prayed it. And the Lord has done it for you. Give him praise. Somebody give him praise. You are free. You will be married. Read the Bible. It says you'll be married. It says even your land will be married. That's Reverend Rosemary. He says you'll be called what? Ezwala and Beulah. Pleasant. I feel good. I knew that I would. Da, 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 da. Somebody ready to praise the Lord. Stand to your feet and tell the Lord, thank you, Jesus. I am free. The Lord set me free, so I am free. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord showed me how to do it. I did it already. He said, pray for them before you preach and teach. And I prayed and I know it's done. At the end, that's why I said, praise the Lord. Just praise the Lord. Just praise the Lord, somebody. Give him glory and honor. Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Because you know in the Bible, it is written, by praise, walls came down. By praise, the enemy got confused and they began to slaughter themselves. By praise, it is done. Now you just want to praise the Lord and say the Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. Amen. Praise God. Pastor Sandra, sometimes what cannot be done any other way, you will get when you praise and worship the Lord. Mama and wife, we want to praise God, right? We want to praise God. Pastor Joe, we want to praise God. Somebody want to praise God. Hallelujah. We want to praise God. Praise the Lord. Prophecy of land, I beg God, I beg of you, please start your reading through the Bible, that program, please. Find a day, once a month, whatever. And let's do this thing. I need for our people to be established in this word, in the Bible. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's only sin when there's law. There's no law. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free, baby, from the law of sin and death. I give him glory. I give him praise. By his stripes, I am healed. I am the righteousness of God. I will make it, for he will make all things well. Give the Lord a shout and a praise for your life. Oh, hallelujah. 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 We have come out of prison. We have come out of the jail. We are not kicking up our heels like cows of the stall let loose. For the son of righteousness is risen with healing in his wings upon us. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Your head is anointed with oil. And your cup runs over. The revelation the Lord gave to us. Somebody saw this as we prayed. And declared over her. You have the mind of Christ. The Lord fire up the neurons of your brain. And the Lord showed her. Lava flowing. But with the color of silver. And blue. Silver is redemption. Blue is heaven. When heaven speaks. The earth must obey. For there's a God in heaven who rules 
in the affairs of men. The heavens do rule, ladies and gentlemen. God has spoken. We have the mind of Christ. We're not going to be forgetful. We'll not have Alzheimer's. We'll not have mental confusion. I speak this over you, over our children, over our children's children. I speak to your generations. Excellency of mind. The same God who gave Daniel and his three friends excellency of mind that they were brighter than the best of the Babylonian young men. May that same God visit you and your children. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I saw the head taking out of the mouth of the lion. Satan will not have your head. Satan will not have your brain. He will not have your mind. You have the mind of Christ. We have seen it. It's in the Bible, but God showed one of us. Redemption. Lava flowing on the brain. God saying, I'm redeeming your head. I'm redeeming your mind. As I prayed, one of the other things God showed me, he says, your head, those of you who are married, the head of every marriage is the husband. God has redeemed the head of your household. Some of the heads of the households, forgive me, but some of them, Satan really was fighting them. And uh, okay, you understand. So he was trying to swallow them up. Well, God has redeemed them. Over the three days that I was, I was praying, that was one of the things that God showed me. Amen. So they'll be the head. Praise God. Ah. Yes. May our sons not be devoured by the streets. Not be, not be devoured by violence. Not be devoured by drugs. Not be devoured by gun warfare, violence. Not be devoured. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Salvation is of the Lord. Receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you. Let's thank him. Excellency of mind. Thank him for it. Excellency of mind. You know, hope happens a lot in the mind realm. Hope, faith is of the heart realm. Hope is of the mind realm. Hope is a helmet you put on your head. You know, we put helmet on our head, not on our heart. Faith is the breastplate of faith. That's of the heart. Faith is of the head. I pray that God will fire up the imaginations of your children, your grandchildren, nieces and nephews, our young people. And you yourself, God will fire up your mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, hallelujah. It says that the old will dream dreams. Do you know what God is saying? God says it's not over for you. Come on, keep dreaming and keep working. Keep doing it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to enlist some of the senior ministers here, your help. We're going to do this. I'll tell you some more about it once you get offline. But we're going to start praying for America and the nations. We are here. So it's America and then the nations. Amen. Once a month, we'll have prayer. <laughs> Amen. God has shown me up to 21st May 2025. Things about this country. Up to 21st May 2025. So we're going to pray. Amen. Something God will take the, the nation from the mouth of the lion that date. Amen. So the things we're going to pray about. All right? Praise God. When we get offline, I'll tell you some more. For that, we're going to need some commitment. Praise God. You take the day that you were born on, so you remember the day you were born on, and you make it a fasting day. Not for everybody, but I need some people who commit around the world and even here. So you just remember, like I was born on Thursday. So on Thursdays, I'm going to fast and pray for America first and the nations. America because we live here. Wherever you are, you pray for that nation and the nations of the world. 
So you remember it, the day that you were born. And to make it easy so that you are committed to doing it, you can break your fast at noon. Amen? If you want to go to 6 p.m., that's fine. But I want, I want us to be diligent to do it. This is, not, this is not a lazy thing. Commit to it, you do it. You, you can't commit to it, don't, don't do it. You with me? But I need a team. Because one of the things God called me to do is call this nation. I'm in this ministry to pray for this nation. Amen. That's part of our job. That's, that's why he brought me here. It's part of my mandate. So this is very serious and we're going to pray. We're going to need a team. You're going to choose to fast once a week. Pray for America. You can break your fast after noon. You want to go to 6 p.m., fine, but you can break your fast after noon so that you do it. Praise God. It is a, it's a serious thing. It's a commitment. We're doing this till 2025. May 21st. After that date, you are free. <laughs> but it's a serious thing, and we're going to do it. Amen? You with me? You know, God has shown us things about this country, and we've prayed, and God has delivered. So we're going to do it. This is a serious thing. We're going to do it. All right? Amen. Wherever you are in the world, if you're an American, you pray for America. You pray for the nations. Or pray for your nation and the nations. If you've heard me. God bless you. Lift your hand to the Lord. Let me bless you. Father, thank you for all that you've done today. Together we say praise the Lord for his good and his mercy endures forever. Together we say praise the Lord for you are good and your mercy endures forever. Around the world together we say praise the Lord for you are good and your mercy endures forever. Let's praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord for you are good and your mercy endures forever. In Jesus name. Amen. We've received all that you've done and we thank you for it. And now Lord, I bless your people that they will go and preach, teach, heal. They will go and do whatever you assigned each one to do. In whatever field of endeavor, they will serve God, serve humanity, serve their country, serve their, their, their community, serve their family. They will fulfill their divine purpose. I bless God's people in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. You will not be devoured. You will not die before your time. You will finish your purpose to the glory of God. I bless you. And by the faith of God, I call it done in Jesus' matchless name. And God's people said, amen. I love you, church. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Give the Lord a shout. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we now give to you tithes, offerings, gifts of love. We give to you with a joyful heart. Offerings. First fruits. We just give to you. You've blessed us so much. And we thank you for the opportunity to sow into God's kingdom. Now, Lord Jesus, receive our worship to God. High priest, holy one, let it be presented to God and be acceptable to God. In Jesus' name. And we thank you that by this, Lord, you stop the devourer for our sake. And you bless our farms, our fields, our jobs, investments occupations, our vocations, our ministries, the works of our hands are blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. If you're given online, you can give via Zell to World Missions Ministries. The number for Zell for World Missions Ministries Zell transfer to World Missions Ministries is 571-234-2387. I repeat, 571-234-2387. You can also give via PayPal online. 
Again, everybody out in the world, church members around the world, or those who support us, you can give online via PayPal at wmmchurch.org, wmmchurch.org, wmmchurch.org. And just click the donate button and give. God bless you. If you want to send a check by mail to World Missions Ministries, please send it to 6805 East Clinton Street, Clinton, Maryland, 20735. I repeat the address for World Missions Ministries. 6805 East Clinton Street, Clinton, Maryland, 20735. And that's USA. Thank you. God bless you all. Amen.